With the RTX 4070 still sitting on digital shelves at its MSRP, seemingly in abundant supply must mean that supply is higher than demand. Why is demand low? Well, there's a lot of reasons. In this video, I wanna talk about uh, some interesting data. This chart was actually sent to me by one of my channel members, Alexander Smirnov. Let's get into this because this is going to look at objectively whether or not the RTX 4070 is a bad deal. So uh, we can see a whole bunch of charts here. We got the 80 class GPUs, we've got the 70 class GPUs, we've got 60 class GPUs, and we've got them over time. We've got percentage differences, there's colors here. Um, I'm a math teacher, so I understand that looking at numbers like this can be a little confusing at first, so let's break it down a little bit. Why is the 4070 color-coded kind of yellow? And then uh, giving us, a f where does this 9.1% come from? What does it mean? What is that? What is that? Okay, so here's the formula uh, that was used to gather this data. Let me eh, fly out of the way here a little bit. Uh, so he's saying he's taking his um, relative performance data from Tech Power Up's relative performance chart, which I will admit is not perfect, but it is one of the only efficient ways without retesting all of these GPUs right now to get some sort of a, a standard comparison data between all of them in any sort of efficient way. And then the formula used to calculate the percentage at the end is the relative performance times the older GPU MSRP divided by the newer GPU MSRP minus one. Math formulas, oh no, let's explain, okay? So in other words, he's going over to Tech Power Up, uh, which is on one of my browser tabs over here. So if you take a particular GPU, like let's say the RTX 3070, and you click on it in this relative performance database, which is based on Tech Power Up review data performance summary um, at 1080p for GPUs um, weaker than the 2080 Ti and 4K for the tw uh, 2080 Ti and faster. You click on any of them, you can set it as the baseline performance level, and then all other GPUs in the chart are measured relative to that. Again, this is not always perfect. It's not always updated with the latest drivers and all of that. That, but it's a, a decent way to get a ballpark figure for this type of comparison. Um, and I don't know how else you'd get the data in any kind of uh, efficient manner. Now, we've got the RTX 4070 at 131%. What does that mean? It means that the RTX 4070 is 1.31 times faster according to this particular relative performance chart, but that lines up to a lot of uh, reviews, myself included, with seeing it usually between 25 to 35% faster. 30% seems pretty reasonable. 31% seems pretty reasonable. Uh, anyway, so that's where we're getting the relative performance number from. So if we then take out our formula and we go like 131 divided by 100% baseline, that we get our 1.31 times faster calculation. Now, what do we do with this? So the next thing we're doing in, the, in uh, the calculation here is the older GPU's MSRP divided by the newer GPU's MSRP. So the older GPU, the 3070, came out at 499, and the 4070 is coming in at 599. So if we go 499 divided by 599, that gets us 1.09. Um, and then he does put a minus one at the end to, if you want to just take this as a percentage, I guess if this was expressed as a percentage, then this would be expressed as 9.1%. Um, if you don't like that, multiply everything by 100, you know, to get your percent sent as 100. Anyway, the point is we are at 9.1%. But what does the 9.1% mean? It doesn't mean how much faster it is. It means it's like performance per dollar, right? So we are taking how much faster it is and multiplying it by the fraction of the MSRP, you know, like how much, right? We're adjusting it down by that. So that's where this calculation comes from. And the main thing that you would say is inaccurate about this is that inflation has not been considered here. And uh, just going to a random inflation adjuster thing, uh, I've seen that, you know, with the 3070 coming out in 2020, uh, in March 2023, there has been massive inflation and 499 has the same buying power as about $579 would today, which does, you know, complicate matters. Also, this relative performance chart isn't necessarily factoring in, uh, you know, other 
other things that have improved about the GPU. Uh, the 4070 draws less power than the 3070 does. It has frame generation. The 3070 doesn't. It has AV1 encoding, all of that. So I want to be clear that this 9.1% number is factoring in just raw performance and raw MSRPs, not factoring in details like features and inflation. We have been through some record inflation. All of those caveats out of the way, let's actually look back at this chart now that we understand it a little bit better. Let's start with the 70 series since that's the main focus of this video, but this could also be fun to look at for some other GPU generations. So we see is 9.1% typical? That seems to be the answer is no. Have there been other bad generations? It looks like the worst one we're seeing is the RTX 2070 which increased its MSRP compared to the 1070 from 379 up to 499, uh, while offering a 37% uh, performance uplift. Um, but given the massive MSRP increase, it offered very little in the ways of a price to performance gain. Um, so that was a poor generation as well. However, we're in our most recent memory, we have the RTX 3070, which came in at the same price as the 2070. Um, you know, if you could get one during the crypto, <laughs> uh, crypto nightmare that we saw. Um, but it offered a 50% performance boost over the 2070, according to that tech power up data. Uh, uh, giving us, well, same same price and a 50% performance uplift, a, well, 50% price to performance uplift when compared using this metric. So we can see that the 3070 was a standout. However, there have been other standouts even better, like the GTX 970 offering a 43% performance improvement over the 770, but coming in at $329 instead of $399 on the 770. Um, giving it a 73% uh, uh, price to performance uplift. And I remember buying a 970 and being pretty happy with it. So, um, but we can see that a lot of other generations are somewhere in between. We can see the 1070 uh, coming from the 970, increasing the price a bit, but giving a 47% performance uplift. You know, we're at 27.6 price to performance by this metric, all of that. Um, so. We can see that there have been some other disappointing uh, types of generations, either not offering a large amount of performance increase or the price increasing along with the performance increase. But we can certainly say that objectively compared to this, uh, this metric, it's a much worse price to performance than usual. However, I will also say um, that the 2070 being the other standout poor value uh, generationally was when Nvidia introduced um, RTX branding over GTX, and that came along with the tensor cores and ray tracing cores. Uh, so they were trying to sell it as you're going to, um, you know, why are they why are they justifying the poor price to performance in raw performance data over the previous generation? Well, DLSS when it came out wasn't that good, but DLSS two has gotten pretty good. But anyways, they're trying to sell features, right? Instead of raw performance uplift, and I think that that has been what Nvidia has been trying to do with this generation as well, with the 4070. Um, and generally the 4000 series in general being primarily sold as a feature upgrade with DLSS 3 frame generation. The problem is there's a lot of people who just aren't excited about DLSS 3 frame generation. It is a cool technology and I'm actually very positive about it myself. I like you, I primarily play graphically demanding single player games at high resolutions like 4K or sometimes at 34 by 40 by 1440 ultra wide. Um, and I do that at, you know, maxed out graphic settings. I do like to enable ray tracing in games where it makes a meaningful visual difference and when I can get a playable experience using it. And that's what frame generation, it, where it's at its best. If you can get to a uh, baseline of around 60 FPS, um, without using frame generation, then it generally feels pretty good once you've enabled it. It does take a latency penalty. It's not raw performance, right? It's gonna smooth out the image, which I like on a high refresh rate screen. It's a cool feature, but for a lot of people, it's irrelevant because it's either maybe not in games they play or you're primarily interested in competitive games where you are interested in the latency of the game rather than the, um, 
uh, you know, turning up the graphics settings, right? So frame generation makes latency a little bit worse. Like I said, if you get a high enough base, rate, base frame rate, it's fine in single player games, but in a multiplayer game, you would not want to do anything that increases your latency. Um, so in other words, frame generation is cool. I've got a whole separate videos on the topic, but I think a lot of people are not super sold on that being a good enough reason uh, to stomach you know, the previous generation giving us a 50% price to performance uplift and this one giving us a 9% uh, price to performance uplift. So that's a bit rough. So this is the, um, you know, objective data showing why the 4070 is disappointing. Now, um, it'll be interesting to see where the, uh, the 4060 falls in this. We don't have data yet for its relative performance to the 3060 or where its price point will be. However, if the 4070 is $600. I wouldn't be surprised to see a 4060 Ti at $500 and a 4060 at $400. So that would be an increase to its MSRP. Again, I'm just spitballing numbers here. So it would need a pretty healthy performance uplift over the 3060 in order to justify that. And again, I don't think consumers are completely sold on frame generation as being more than a nice to have, but not necessarily a must have. Now, uh, we can also look at where the 4080 falls in this because it looks even, because here's the other way of looking at the 4070. The 4070 is um, better priced to performance than some of the other GPUs of this generation, at least, uh, with the 4080 being especially bad. Uh, it offered a 49% performance uplift over the 3080, uh, but came in at a $1,200 price tag compared to the $700 MSRP of the 3080. Uh, meaning it's actually moved backwards in its price to performance compared to its predecessor by 13.1%. That kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, now, a uh, huge thank you to Alexander Smirnoff for providing me with this data for us to look at. Um, again, this is showing that the 3080 is uh, offering... Um, you know, the 30 series was very good price to performance uplift coming off of the disappointing 20 series. Um, now it would have been cool if we had like the 70 Ti classes to look at here as well, and the 90 classes haven't been around long enough to, to I think, give a, a real meaningful look here. Uh, but since 90 classes never really offer that great a price to performance, I think they kind of can just justify doing whatever it is they're doing. Um, but anyway, what do you guys think about this data? Huge thank you to Alexander Smirnov and uh, for uh, helping us out with these charts. Um, but does any of this mean that you shouldn't buy a 4070? I mean, clearly with how many are sitting in stock, uh, a lot of them, well, are, you know, not being purchased. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have bought them and I'm sure there was a bunch of supply, but uh, clearly uh, more supply than demand, at least at the moment. So should you actually buy buy one? Well, I have separate follow-up videos on that note. Well, not follow-up videos, videos I already did with detailed head-to-head -head comparisons. The thing is, if you're comparing it against NVIDIA GPUs, um, the 3070, if you're buying new, is still $500 or more. Um, and so I do think it offers, like, I, like we see in this chart, an improvement to price to performance plus new features and all of that over the 3070. So it is slightly better. It's just disappointing. Um, against the 3070 Ti, which had the same baseline uh, MSRP, but is now available at least a little bit below $600, I think thanks to the launch of the 4070. Um, if we set the 3070 Ti as the baseline and look at the, the 4070's um, performance uplift from here, uh, you know, the 4070 is offering 23% or so more performance, uh, plus the extra features and whatnot. Uh, so compared to that, I do think that the 4070 is a better buy than the 3070 Ti. Uh, the 3070 Ti would have to come down a lot in price, especially with its eight gigabytes of VRAM for it to make any sense. Um, however, you, you can compare it to the uh, AMD GPUs. The 6950 XT has been recently available as low as $610, although it looks like people noticed that and bought those. So that we're now seeing it for $630 and, and a little bit up. So a little bit more money for the 6950 XT uh, will net you a little bit more raw performance. Um, depending on the game, and I did a detailed head-to-head -head comparison between these two, uh, you know, the 4070 is going to be smaller, fit in cases easier, draw less power, has more features, but does offer you a bit less raw performance. Um, so in other words, I think the 4070 is justifiable to purchase at its current price. 
it's just sad that it's done so little to shake up the market, compared to, especially compared to its immediate predecessor. An RTX 3070 was an exciting GPU, where if you tried to sell a 2070 for $500 when a 3070 was available for $500, it would have completely upset the market, right? Whereas the 4070 is slightly better deal than what we had before it launched. And when a new graphics card generation comes out, I think most people are looking for shaking up the market, uh, like significant price to performance improvements at any given price point. And that is just not what we got here. Um, so should you buy one? I mean, if you're buying a GPU at the $600 price point, uh, look at my video versus the 6950 XT. Those are kind of your choices and it can be justifiable. Um, but man, I really wish I could say more for a new generation of GPUs than, well, you can kind of justify buying it. It's, it's, it's a little bit better than what came before it, I guess, sort of. <laughs> Got some new features. Uh, anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section and I hope all of you have an excellent day.